Well, hello there. This is Shane from Shane's Reviews, and I hope that you are having a good day today. And we're going to be talking about a book that I found on Audible that, well, it had pretty good reviews, over a million sales, and I was like, well, it's outside of the norm. Let's give it a shot. And that book would be Polar Vortex, wrote by Matthew Mather and narrated by Taylor Taylorson. Quick word about the narrations before we move on with it. So the narrations of the book, uh, pretty good, pretty decent. Uh, not the best I've ever heard, but certainly not the worst I've ever heard either. Uh, so there's that. The production you know, was fairly decent. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of things that were added in here or there for like audio cues or change of scenes or anything like that. So that was appreciated. It was just pretty much straight the story. And uh, as far as like the editing of the audio goes, it was done fairly well. Uh, there wasn't a whole lot of oh my god moments that would kind of break the spell as you read the book. So what do I think about it? Is it worth your time, efforts, and energies? We'll address that as we go. <laughs> so it's a little different from what we normally read. It is sci-fi. It is a story. And the first lesson that I gave the book, I was I was kind of a little bleh about it. But there's a particular movie that I absolutely love. And it's one of those movies where if you if you watch it just once, you'll get just an idea, some confusion, a whole lot of questions, not a lot of answers. And then whenever you go back and you rewatch it, then there's all kinds of things that get open to you that you just wouldn't have seen. And then the next time you watch it, oh, well, that's what this is and this is. It's a very odd experience, and I love that kind of a thing because instead of being spoon-fed, it's just letting you figure it out for yourself. And the devil's in the details, and so it is in this book as well. On first glance, this book looks like something that is just empirically a straight from point A to point B with some sci-fi splatterings just everywhere, and then... We have the typical tropical story of we've got men, we've got people versus nature. And then there's also people versus people. And so it's kind of like a survival sci-fi story. Um, and that doesn't sound very interesting, right? But there's all these little inconsistencies. Like whenever I went through it the first time, I didn't catch the very beginning where the people already have his notebook and it's basically a journal that he kept during this entire time uh that was one thing and then the other thing was that it was being narrated by the person reading that i'm completely missed it on the first go and so it it kind of makes a little bit more sense on some aspects of it with that knowledge uh, up front so the storyline is there's a duder, he's got a kid, he's got a wife that's got a miniature duder or dudette inside of her, and they're splitting up, not because of problems, but because they're going to be, not because of problems, but because they're going to be traveling. So Mitch and his wife, I think her name was Natalie, I could be wrong on that, and then their daughter, Lilypad, or Lily, uh, she... She and Mitch are going to be going home before his wife. And there's this really weird interplay in between Mitch and his wife's brother uh, because he's a pilot, but he's not a trusted individual in the family, which would make me really feel awkward about getting on the plane in the first place, especially if I knew the dude was holding a grudge of sorts. But that's one of those things. I mean, these are little details that are in the story that make you think that we're going to go one way whenever we're not. It's a diversionary tactic. And, you know, is his wife's brother a good person or a bad person? I mean, it tends to lean towards not good throughout this book, but that's one of those things that didn't really add to the story much. And it was kind of a really weird interplay to be upfront about it. So I was kind of off put by it, to be frank, because why is that information important to the story? I could understand if um, if there was like some kind of a thing that his 
wife had to have done and her brother was blah blah and all that but there wasn't any of this in the story uh, instead it's just it opens up it's a big family unit they're sitting down to eat and uh, her father and Mitch and Lily are all there and uh, you know it's just typical family stuff that you see in this scene and that's good it's, it's proper and then we get onto a plane and then the planes in the air and then the planes not in the air and it's you need to see how that happened now remember where I said the devil's in the details I'm nitpicking that whole family dynamic thing because if you're going to use something like that you should use something like that but it wasn't so yeah but on the other side of details that are in this book such as after they've crashed and the descriptions of the of Mitch checking himself to see if he has anything extruding from him where is this blood from what happened the feelings that they were having because of the cold uh, the descriptions of being on the ice and seeing Norwals and these sorts of things these little details are what sold the book for me if it hadn't been for that there's no way I would have made it through it not at all no, but I do have to say there is a payoff at the end of the book if you stick with it because it's kind of like a wolf in sheep's clothing in that it looks like it's going to be this, but whenever you get to the end of it, oh, okay, well, fair enough. And that small detail that I missed the first time that I went through it has to do with that journal. That journal was found weeks after. And so there's kind of two endings and that will make sense if you read it. And that was the thing that I really liked the most about it was whenever I got it and read it the second time, that stuff came into focus and I was like, oh my gosh, oh boy, I was such a putz, I missed that. Wow, congratulations. Hmm, because I wasn't necessarily going to trash the book, but I, <coughs> I forgot to drink my water. I know better than to not drink water and try to talk. It just doesn't work. But anyway, I derailed myself again. So, yeah. Hmm. Oh, it's not that I was going to trash talk the book and say, oh, it's horrible, don't read it or anything like that, because I saw that there was little valuable trinkets all the way through the book that people would enjoy to read, and it's understandable that I had missed something since it had so many purchases. Why was I... And, and then it came into focus. I was like, oh, okay, fair enough, good, we're, we're good to go. Now there's the whole fight that Mitch and the people that survived this crash are having against nature because, you know, let's face it, whenever you're in the Arctic, the Arctic is a very cold place and it's a desert. So there's not a whole lot of moisture and that would be a big, big struggle point because there's different types of ice. There's different types of snow. There's salt in some that hasn't cured pretty much uh, think about it as boiling a pan of water to get the salt because you can do that with salt water and doing it backwards so you freeze it so the salt comes out over the course of time um, kind of interesting that and these these are things that like i was saying the details of the book uh, especially whenever it comes down to the people versus people stuff that was in there. So there's a, a big Russian bear of a man, there's a Chinese uh, individual and his son, there's a, a research scientist that's on there as well that's carrying either smallpox or chickenpox or something like that. Some kind of really viral type of a, a situation in a jar inside of a bag, that kind of a situation. Uh, and so there's all kinds of paranoia the people are alone they're afraid they have to either come together or kill each other uh, and their best hopes is to be found and i thought it was really neat seeing one individual that was considered to be a gray hat slash black hat slash white hat hacker he really couldn't make up his mind if he's supposed to be good or bad but the way that he was transfixed on trying to solve the problem of just where are we so we can decide what we need to do to be found. Uh, that was interesting. But then there's a subplot point that needs to be brought up at this point as well, being what actually happened to the plane. That really wasn't so much science fiction, really. 
<laughs> we're not going Donnie Darko where there's multiple universes that get created because a plane engine falls out of the sky from nowhere and then they have to be joined up by Donnie Darko sacrificing himself. No, we're not talking about that kind of a thing. Instead, what we're talking about is espionage. Apparently, whenever the brother of Nate's wife takes... Apparently, whenever the brother of Nate's wife is going to be stepping down from being the pilot, a shift change, if you will, there's some individuals that come into the cockpit. Uh, that's a different flight crew altogether. And then just a few hours later, they're crashed. And nobody knows what happened. Everybody was passed out asleep. And it was like something that happened like clockwork. So that was kind of like the first little hint of, ooh, what's going on here? And then there's the diversionary tactics that have to do with that and why they were trying to get the plane down. Not telling you anything about it because if you read it, I want that to be something that you can explore on your own. As far as like the the endings, <laughs> it's that was the payout for me because it's oh it, it, it was just one of those items where I was like, you've got to be kidding me. What, why did I even bother reading this? Because I can sum this up in one sentence. And then I got to thinking about that. I was like, wait a minute. Some of the best stories that I've ever read or some of the best movies that I've ever read could be summarized in a sentence. And what have I missed? So that's why I read it the second time. I'm glad I did. I don't know if it was because I was super tired whenever I went through it the first time or not, but mm, there is that. <sighs> So, without getting into those actual endings, there's some imagery in one of them that I absolutely loved. And that was the payout portion for me. And I'm curious to see what you guys and gals think about that. So feel free, if you have read this or are going to read it, come back to this video and put a thing down there. I will take a look at it. Uh, and I'd like to see what you think about it. And if you have read it, tell me what you think. Am I wrong? Is it just a horrible book and I'm putting so much more into it? Probably not. But it, let's answer that question. Is it worth the time and your efforts, your energy to read this book? If you're really into the stuff we usually talk about, you know, like space shoot 'em up drama, you know, that, that kind of a thing, probably not going to be your book because it's a lot more subdued and it's not, it's not that at all. But it does fall into sci-fi because of some of the fantastical things that could be there or may not be there. It just depends on how you look at it. So yeah, in that case it is. So if you're looking for something a little bit offbeat from what we usually talk about that's kind of got a surprise, this might be the thing for you to check out. These are some of the most interesting things that we have seen you wonderful people put onto our video comment sections. Thank you so much for that. And also, the question of the week. Woo. You find yourself stranded in the Arctic after a plane crash. Just go with it, please. Just, just go with it. I'm curious to know what our viewers would do. Would you guys try to help each other and kind of do like a, a forming of, of let's just do the best for everybody? Or are you one of those types that would say, mm, nah, that's mine. Get away. You know, what, what kind of survival instincts do you guys have? Is it one of those things where you want to help others or do you want to help yourself? Is helping others going to help yourself? I'm going to start a discussion down there in the comment section. You guys know what to do. And if you made it this far, oh my goodness, thank you so much for watching. We really appreciate it. And let us know what you think about this. Now, don't get me wrong. We still have the set as it was. Uh, it's not been moved. It's not been torn down. It is 100% healthy. It's right there. Seriously, I mean, it's, I, I can touch the table. <laughs> so don't worry about that. We just want to test out a couple of things and see what, what happens with it. In the short of the long, in the wide of the short, thank you so much if you're still watching. You are our heroes. Thank you so much. So by now, that thing should be coming in from over there. And I don't know if you would pick this one or this one. But if you pick one of those two videos over there, then I will see you in the next video. Be safe. Be healthy. We love you guys. Be good. Peace.